As you'll already know, if you checked out my OnePlus 6 versus OnePlus 5T camera comparison, end of shameless plug, it's a really good snapper here on the latest OnePlus flagship, which got me wondering, how does it compare to some of the competition? That's why I decided to stick it up against the Huawei P20 Pro, which frankly has one of the best smartphone cameras we've ever played around with, and also the Honor 10, which comes to a similar sort of price bracket as the OnePlus 6. Plus, I just can't get enough of the jazzy design of these smartphones. I mean, look at them, they're psychedelic as hell. So I took all three of these out in London for the day and did the whole touristy shtick and got a load of photos and videos and here is an in-depth comparison on how well they perform. Now it's worth pointing out that all three of these phones have an excellent manual mode with the ability to shoot raw format on the go. However, I stuck with the full auto mode for all three of these smartphones as that's going to be the real world usage for your average consumer. So first up, let's take a look at that hardware. So the OnePlus 6 sports a 16 megapixel primary lens with an f1.7 aperture and optical image stabilization built in, as well as a secondary 20 megapixel lens with an f1.7 aperture once again, and it uses phase detection autofocus to lock onto your subject. Next up is the P20 Pro, which rocks a rather balmy tri-lens camera. That primary lens is a 40 megapixel snapper with an f1.8 aperture. You also get a 20 megapixel monochrome with an f1.6 aperture. And finally, the third lens is an 8 megapixel f2.4 optical zoom lens. You once again have phase detection autofocus, or PDAF for short, and also a bit of laser autofocus to back it up, which is particularly useful in low light. As for optical image stabilisation, we originally thought it was only on that primary lens, but some recent teardowns have suggested that all three of them actually boast a bit of OIS, which is frankly nuts. Bit of a hard act to follow, unfortunately, for the Honor 10, which again rocks a dual lens camera. You get a 16 megapixel f1.8 aperture primary lens, backed by a 24 megapixel black and white f1.8 aperture lens as well. And like the other two phones, it's a bit of PDAF for your autofocus. So first up, I just wandered around town shooting lots of photos, the kind of stuff that tourists would go nuts over, like a bit of Piccadilly Circus, for instance. And it's evident when viewing back these everyday shots that all three of these phones definitely excel when it comes to detail levels. I beamed these photos to my telly and they all came out perfectly crisp, ready for a thrilling holiday slideshow as soon as my mates come around to visit. Uh, that'll be any day now. I did notice that shots taken with the Honor 10 were on the whole a bit brighter, though that does occasionally mean that you get oversaturated areas, especially when shooting in sunlight. For those HDR shots, the P20 Pro definitely offers the most balance, although the OnePlus 6 is not too far behind, and because of that oversaturation, the Honor 10 sadly falls into last place. Still, moving subjects are handled well by all three of these handsets, as long as the conditions are good, of course. And one other difference between these three that's immediately noticeable is the fact that the P20 Pro's AI mode really boosts the colours, especially when you're shooting things like greenery. Those images really, really pop, so you can basically forget any kind of realistic colour reproduction. Sticking with the P20 Pro, it is absolutely the granddaddy master when it comes to zoom shots. You get a ridiculously good 5x hybrid zoom here, which means you get nice and close to your subject while keeping everything crisp. The OnePlus 6 can also get you pretty close, but the detail levels do definitely take a serious hit, especially when compared to that P20 Pro. And in last place is the Honor 10, which can only manage a 2x zoom and no more, so you're stuck with a distant view of whatever you're trying to shoot. Now, of course, because all these phones boast a dual lens camera or a tri lens camera in the case of the P20 Pro, you do get a portrait mode on board as well, which is becoming increasingly popular. Here, once again, the P20 Pro simply excels. You can get incredible results that you'd expect from a DSLR with a proper narrow focus lens attached, not a smartphone that's on simple full auto mode. It's nuts. However, I did notice one unusual quirk with the portrait mode, which is that the results always come out blurry when you use the timer. So if you want a good portrait shot of yourself, you'll have to find a friend. The Honor 10 also comes out with some respectable results, even if it can't possibly match its tri-lens brother. The OnePlus really surprised us. The results are really, really solid as well, pretty much as good as the P20 Pro. You get some really crisp silhouettes and a pleasing amount of bokeh as well. Now, all three of these phones boast at least one lens with a wide aperture for those low light shots, which means that they all produce some pretty good night shots. Of course, the P20 Pro, unsurprisingly, is again the big daddy. You get impressive levels of detail whenever you take low light shots, and whenever you view them back on a big screen, there's still plenty of crisp detail in there, with only a little bit of grin creeping in to ruin things. And you also have that brilliant night mode to produce even better results when needed. The OnePlus 6 isn't too far behind though, the results are still perfectly acceptable again when viewed on a large screen. And while the Honor 10 is once again in last place, the test photos still come out pretty great considering the budget price. Moving on to video, and this time it's the OnePlus 6 which really smashes the competition. You can shoot 4K Ultra HD footage at a stunning 60 frames per second for some hyper-realistic results. 
The P20 Pro and the Honor 10 will also shoot at 4K, but they top off at 30 frames per second. All the same, still packed with detail and look lovely when viewed back on a telly. However, it's undeniable that the image stabilization is miles better on the OnePlus 6 compared with the others. Even if you're walking and shooting at the same time, you get some impressively smooth results, and that's even at that high 60 frames per second level. Thankfully, if you do drop down to full HD at 30 frames per second, the P20 Pro and the Honor 10 are a lot less jerky and a lot smoother. Now, slow motion has been a bit of a hot topic lately as well, so I thought I'd do a bit of testing there too. And once again, the Honor 10 is unfortunately the most limited, offering a simple 120 frames per second mode, and that's your lot. Still, the Full HD resolution does keep things nice and crisp, and you can edit the results in post-processing, as you would expect. The P20 Pro offers that same shoot mode, as well as a 240 frames per second mode at 720p, and also a new super slow motion mode that shoots at 960 frames per second, just like the Galaxy S9 and Sony's Xperia XZ2. Again, this is in 720p, so it doesn't really look great when viewed back on a big telly, and also it's such a small snippet that you have to time your hitting of the shutter button just right, otherwise you'll miss the action. That's why any slow motion fans might want to look to the OnePlus 6 instead. You get 1080p shooting at 240 frames per second, so that immediately trumps the competition, and you can also bump up to 480 frames per second at that 720p level. And the good news is that you can shoot continuously for a full minute, so there's no need to time it just right. And so that, in a brief nutshell, is these three smartphone snappers compared. Now, unsurprisingly, the P20 Pro came out on top, but only by a narrow margin in quite a few areas. The OnePlus 6 really impressed us when it came to the portrait shots, and especially that video mode where it actually excels. So which one of this trio would you pick up for your everyday shoot? Let us know in the comments down below if there's anything I've up or left out then definitely let me know in the comments below as well i'm sure you will and uh thanks for watching everyone don't forget to subscribe too that's always good right cheers